So, what's up with these shears? Why was the hairstylist unhappy with the sharpening? Let's give him a test. Let's see if we can make the hairstylist happy with her Joelle's. I'm going to start out cutting some. This is single ply, really thin. You can see my finger through it, toilet tissue. I can also use uh, single ply puff tissue but this works pretty good. I'm using this to test and see what the cut is like right now. So I'm going to do just the least amount of pressure and this is dry tissue. Up, oh, it doesn't cut. Let's do a little bit more pressure. It will cut with a little side pressure. Looks like the screws adjust it right but I'm going to give it one more click. Mmm, still kind of wimpy, isn't it? Let's see what it does with some hair. My little friend here has had some really bad hair days. Some alopecia problems. Let's see how these shears cut. It just flips. Look at that. Folds the hair. Alright, when hair folds, it's going to be due to to loose a screw and we just tighten the screw so that's not it or it could be the shear is out of alignment or it could be it's just not sharp enough when I put my thumb here I'm not feeling that sharp of an edge let's do the scratch test and see what angle these were actually sharpened at so I'm going to set my clamp. I'm going to guess at what the angle might have been. As blunt as these felt to me, I'm thinking they were sharpened at a 35 degree angle. So I'm going to set my clamp at 35. I would think 40 to 45 would have been the correct angle. But let's set it at 35. And for this process, I really don't need to take them apart because I just want to, I'm curious to see what the angle is on them. So I'm coloring it in, coloring it in, and the nice thing about our clamp now is it's got a little cutout area so that if you've got a protruding screw and you don't want to take the shear apart, you've got a little space here, see, for the screw to fit in, which is really nice. So I'm just laying this up to my plate. This is 800 grit abrasive paper and I'm just doing a little scratch and I'm going to see what has been removed. Can you see there's still red right on the cutting edge? There's still some red right here on the cutting edge. So it's telling me that whatever angle was sharpened at was even blunter than 35. I probably would have done it at a 40. So the problem with the shears is that they were sharpened at too blunt of an angle. Now this could have been they set the clamp at the wrong angle or it could have been that they were freehanding. So either way we're going to fix this shear. Now to correctly sharpen this Joel shear I'm going to need to take it apart. This video is not to show you step by step how to sharpen a shear but it's to explore why a shear that you may have sharpened as a sharpener or your sharpener is sharpened for you is not cutting correctly and it's folding the hair rather than cutting it. But I'm going to fly through this. This is my Kitty Yama stone and I'm using this because this is maybe what that sharpener is using. So I'm doing my inside ride line and I'm just going to do a couple of strokes and kind of look and see if there was a problem the sharpener had with the ride line and very likely did because I'm still seeing red up in here. So it looks to me either the shear is out of alignment or the rod line wasn't done correctly. This is a 4000 grit. You may want to, if you're running to these kind of problems, switch it over to the 1000 grit. So I want to do a few strokes and the red is all gone, except still a little iffy at the tip, but I'm going to work on that on the 4000 grit side. I don't want to go too crazy with the 1000 grit. And it's telling me that blade's probably a little bit out of alignment, but Joel's are notorious for snapping and breaking if you try to fix the alignment. 
So I really don't want to have to do that. We've got the same problem with the tip. This lady was probably a point cutter. Did a lot of wearing out the tip. Little extra pressure at the tip. The red's gone, but I'm not seeing a ride line there. Just got to be really careful at the tip not to take off too much metal. It's really need to be bent. For some reason, Joel seems to be the ones that are most likely to break. So this is uh, 800 grit. I'm going to use my Swarf eraser, which you see is pretty ugly. And that kind of cleans it up and makes my pad last a little bit longer. It's not perfect, but it definitely looks better. What angle do I set them at? Let's do it at 40. Probably originally came from the factory at 45, but since it's a blunter than 35 at this point, I don't want to take too much metal off, especially with that tip looking kind of iffy. Set this in my clamp. And I don't want to rotate it, so I have it in position. And I'm doing a slight rock to get that whole blade, but I want to be very ginger about the tip. And you notice I didn't pull it out. I just kept it all on the plate. Sometimes you need to get really aggressive with these and just get some metal moving. The blue film actually goes up to 500, but usually if I go anything more aggressive than 800, I'll switch to the 3M. I don't want to go too much here because this moves metal in a hurry. And I'm still not at the edge. Got a little burr here in the middle. Little burr here, none there, none here. It looks like I'm getting pretty aggressive with these, but sometimes you just need to. And now I'm pulling it out to get that tip. So I'm trying to actually reshape that blade so that radius will be like it was originally. And I'm about four millimeters from getting it to the tip. But I think that's enough on the 100 micron. And I'll get down to that last little bit using my 800 grit. Because remember I said I didn't want to take too much off of the tip. Still about this much for the tip that I don't have. About that much down. There's no burr. And I can see it visually because of that red sharpie. That's close enough I'm stopping. I'm assuming this blade has got the same problem. Another thing I'm seeing, it has the word China here, and half of the C is gone, so it's telling me that a lot of metal has been taken off at the tip. Just like the last one, nowhere near the edge and nowhere near the, at the tip. And I'm within two, maybe three millimeters of the tip, so I'm going to switch out at this point. Now, if this was a fresh 800, I would go down to something finer than 800. But since this is a worn 800, I think it's going to be sufficient. When you're working with 40 degree angles or lower, you want to leave a little bit of bite to it. So you don't want to have it too smooth or it's going to push hair. And I see a lot of grind marks down here in that tip. I want to get that out so it's a little smoother. That looks nice, nice and polished. So now I'm going back to my stone. I kept my stone covered up because I didn't want any of the script to fall on it. See if I can pop off that burr. Still feel burr at the tip. That doesn't surprise me. I felt the roughness here. See, I don't like the way that tip looks, but let's see how it cuts. Not great wet. You see that? So I'm going to go back over it with my nail buffer. Nail buffer is magical. That's cutting. Double check the tip. Do you like watching my videos? I like making them. Please comment, subscribe, like, and hit the little bell for notifications when we have new videos come out.